Hello everybody! Today we have a really special video because I just got a really awesome large mail haul which is basically Molly McIntyre's entire first edition collection. Like we're talking everything from like 1986 to 1988 and I'm really excited because there were a couple of things in here that I actually didn't have yet and I'm really excited to add to my collection. But today I wanted to kind of just do a slow mail haul because I haven't done one of these in a while on YouTube because most of them are on my Patreon now because you know it's just a little bit more of a casual space where we can kind of hang out and you know spend an hour talking about dolls and looking at doll stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to do one on YouTube because again Again, this is such an exciting mail haul that I wanted to share it with everybody. So grab a snack and let's look at some doll stuff. All right, so today's video is gonna be pretty slow paced. We're gonna just kind of go through every single piece in this collection because there are some super stupid rare things in these trunks right here. So um, yeah, we have a lot of really exciting things to look at because a couple of the things I got are things that, especially one thing that I'll probably show you at the end just because I'm gonna uh, be a jerk like that. But um, I think the thing that I'm gonna show you at the end is gonna be the, the single thing that I wanted from this entire lot. It's something I've been looking for for three years and finally found. So anyway, so let's go ahead and start tearing into it. So I ended up purchasing this from somebody that I know. So I kind of have a really good idea of um, obviously everything that's in here and what to expect in terms of quality because not everything is going to be in perfectly mint condition. So um, yeah, some things are going to be repairable and you know, I'm probably going to sell a few of these things to be honest because I have a lot of this stuff already because I've been very actively seeking it out for the last three years. And part of that has been learning about what to buy in the first place because it's so hard to figure out all of this stuff. Like what was 1986? What was from 1988? So anyway, the very first thing we have in this lot, which you can only see part of it in frame because it's so huge, is Molly's first edition trunk. And now it's the same version that you've seen in my videos for like the last year or so. So it's the one with the original star pattern. So if you can see here as we open this up, hopefully nothing's falling out. You can see that this star pattern is not quite like the other ones that like the other trunks that you're used to seeing. The star is a little bit more of your standard star shape. And I always talk about this one looking sort of like the cross section of an apple where you kind of see the seeds in the middle and it kind of makes a star shape. But this is the version that they sold in 1986 and I believe part of 1987. So this is a true first edition trunk. And the main difference really is that star pattern. I don't know if you can hear me. I feel like this is blocking the microphone. But uh, the main difference is the lining on the inside is, is this star pattern. So that's what makes this really, really sought after. And I have in my day probably purchased five of these and have only ever actually received two of them because this is one of those things that people covet. And uh, you know, what for one reason or another, you know, I complain about it all the time, but half the time I buy these and I get them for a good deal, somebody else goes and messages the seller and offers them more money and steals my deal. So I finally got a second one, which I plan on using for my display because I'm gonna fix it up and, um, you know, because as is typical with Molly's trunk, all of the like silver banding on the sides tends to rub off over the years. See, this looks like it's a little bit like tarnished or whatever, or whatever, but it's actually because the silver coating on this has worn off and it is extremely common for every version of Molly's trunk. So I'm gonna go back in and paint this and kind of tidy this up a little bit so that it looks a little bit more new. And this will be the version that I use on my display because um, one of the things I've been trying to do is find duplicates of things so that I have like a display version and I have a, um, like a, like my, I don't know what I would call it. It was sort of like my archival version. So I'm trying to build the perfect pleasant company collection that is basically brand new mint in box, unfaded, unplayed with just basically like you would have received it. Uh, if you had ordered it in 1986 from the catalog. So um, that can kind of present some issues when I'm changing my display. And particularly here, um, now that I'm in sunny North Carolina, the display that I have is getting more sunlight that I'm comfortable with. So I have things like Samantha's first edition trunk and several signed dolls that will fade in UV light. So I'm really trying to pull those out of my display for now until I can get into the next house 
so that I can have them in a UV protected room and then display them again. So for now, while I'm kind of in a temporary living situation, I wanna have basically, I wanna have my display, right? I wanna be able to see and appreciate all this stuff, but I need it to be versions that I don't care if they fade. So we've got a couple of TLC trunks today that are gonna be my new display ones after I fix them up. So this is gonna be one of those and that's why I'm so excited. I've been trying so long for like the last six months to try and find another one of these trunks and my deals keep getting sniped for me. So I finally have a second one. So after all of that rambling, again, this is Molly's first edition trunk. Now I'm gonna take some things out of it so that I can lift it up and kind of give you a better look at it because again it's difficult to get that far back from the camera with this again because it's so big it's hard to get the whole thing in frame but if you can see again I know you've seen this before on my channel but here you go here's a good look at what it looks like and actually the exterior doesn't look too bad a lot of times these things are really banged up but the sides on these actually look really great in fact, I think they look better than my current one. So I'm really happy about this. I think this is gonna fix up great for my display. So anyway, let's go ahead and dig through here. We've got some rare items uh, as far as I know. So yeah, we'll start just digging through the drawers. I think we've got some stuff to the side over here that I've already taken out. So we'll start with that. And maybe we'll mainly start with this mirror. Again, one thing that's very common for these mirrors because they are very, very like homemade feeling is that they typically fall off of the trunk. Molly's was actually glued to the back of her trunk. And very typically the metal, like it's sort of like a mylar sheet that was cut to size and put in here to be a mirror. That usually gets damaged because it's really, really thin, but I actually have some replacements so I can fix this and glue it back in and it'll look good as new. But these were very, very handmade looking. I mean, this is all probably the original cardboard and tape that this was made with. Like, uh, again, I have another version of this and some of the earlier, at least, versions of Molly's trunk. Yeah, these are very, very homemade looking. So yeah, this corrugated cardboard was very likely the original cardboard that was in this mirror. So really exciting. And like I said, I'll be able to clean this up and make this look good as new. So that's really great. Another thing we kind of have in here, again, this is gonna be random. I'm not gonna bother going in order because it will take too long. And again, it's kind of fun to discover this stuff together. So <laughs> that's how we're gonna do it today. So one of the things that was in here as well is what I believe is probably a 1986 version of her school bag. Again, this is something I will probably sell because I have a mint version of this in the original ribbon box. Um, you know, the one that has the satin ribbon and the sticker on it that, you know, was packaged in 1986 before the company even launched. So this would be, I think the third one of these I have. So this one will probably get sold, but it's got the really thin writing on Molly's name, like the, basically her name tag. The lettering is a lot thinner on the first version. So that's how I know this is likely a 1986 tagged one. And again, it's very delicate. Like the leather on these tends to dry out over the years. So I'm trying to be kind of careful taking like getting this open because I want to see what else is in here because I actually don't know how much of the school supplies are actually in here so in her school set oh we have a surprise apple that actually belongs to Kirsten so uh this was a surprise which is really fun because this is likely a first edition apple if I I've got a first edition somewhere nearby, but I don't want this video to be three hours long today. But by, based on the like weight and the light little dusting of yellow on the top of this apple, I'm pretty sure this is a 1986 apple. So that is really cool. Um, I don't know if I need it, but I might uh, sell that as well, just because it's a really good replacement part for somebody that has an original set and is missing that piece. So... This is off to a really good start. So we have, um, actually let's check the tag first. So I was right, this is 1986 and it's got the black writing on the tag, which I actually have forgotten if that's first or second edition and I cannot get it to focus. But um, yeah, so this is generally considered a first edition, whether or not it was like the first run or the second run. And again, we have the Eraser, which is a really hard to find piece from this set. It's got the original pencil. I believe Molly's only had one pencil with her set. We have her report card, which 
always cracks me up because it has her grades on here and she does get an A in hygiene, which is great. Although I have to say a lot of the Molly dolls I get, their hygiene would not classify as an A. Um, let's see. Uh, C plus in music. Who gets a C in music? Molly. So anyway, and then like B's and C's in arithmetic, which honestly, same. So yeah, again, we've got her gaming skill with... Ga Gaining Skill with Words book, which I think is probably a reproduction of an original. Actually, I can tell you one thing about this. I think the original ones do not have a copyright year on the front. And I think this is an original. Again, it's been a couple of years since I've done a deep dive into this, but this is definitely an early version of this. And then we have... Oh yeah, this is great. So I have a feeling that this is the first edition. I've got a few more things in here. So this is her binder and we've got some notebook pages in here. Apparently the child has written Molly McIntyre's name on here, which honestly is one of the more tame things I've seen in here. Um, it's actually pretty funny. Sometimes you get these things and a child has played with it and written on it and you're like, oh my God, I hope that kid's okay. Um, so yeah, Again, we've got the pencil case and something else in this pencil case. I hope you all are prepared for a long video. This video might end up being four hours long. So, uh, and this is a multicolored pencil. I guess this was part of Molly's set as well. Again, it's been so long since I've um, gotten into this set because I got my first edition one so long ago. But yeah, this is really great. And then it also has a 1986 copyright. Uh, sticker on here and again you'll see these on a lot of stuff from 1986 and early 1987 so yeah this is a super early ver version and somebody's really gonna want this so I'm gonna try and like carefully put it back together so that I don't destroy it because again I will definitely be selling this so anyway yeah uh what do we have next okay like one really super random thing that I'm really excited about because we'll get to the rest of this stuff in a second um is i got the first version of her birthday i think it's her party treats is the name of the set and so um without giving away all of my secrets uh, um this is a first edition version of the balloon because it has this little like dog leg here you see how the wire comes out to the right and then down instead of straight down. That's how you spot a first edition balloon for her party treats set. So this would have been the version that came again in the original ribbon box in 1987. And it still even has the little ribbon that's uh, hang that hangs down from the balloon knot. So this one's in really great shape too. Not a whole lot of chipping on the the wire basically that's the balloon string so i'm really optimistic that this is going to be in pretty like this whole set is going to be in good shape which is great because this is actually one of the things that i'm missing from my molly collection is a first edition version of the party treats mine is actually from 1988 so let's yeah let's go ahead really quickly well i'll show you one more thing that was in the trunk because i'm totally gonna forget and that's uh this is not a first edition actually this is an earlier version of her trunk or her i guess this is her suitcase from her winter story but this is not a first edition so this is probably um i don't know what it's worth it's probably worth like 25 30 bucks so i probably will sell it um but yeah very cool like I said, I think I got most things in Molly's collection today, which is, I don't know, it's always fun going through like a whole collection of things. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this trunk here and see what's in these drawers. So again, we are seeing some of this for the first time. So you are discovering it as the same time <laughs> that I am. So um, yeah, so a lot of the party stuff is in this top drawer. So we're staying on theme and what is this? Oh, that's the candles. So just really quickly. Yeah, this is in really great shape and I'm so excited about this. So we've got her poppers. I think these are they are these called poppers or crackers? Maybe they're called crackers, both of which are funny words. So yeah, we've got the four original crackers, I guess. We've got the party blowers. This first or this set came with, uh, can you see this? Let's see. It's hard to show this like vertically, but these original party blowers that I believe work, but I have never dared to put my mouth on one of these. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine why, but again, this is the first version that has the Made in Japan, if I can get this to focus, the Made in Japan 
right like sticker on the mouthpiece I bet you cannot see that at all you'll just have to take my word for it so this set came with two reds a blue and a green and again these were random there were only red blue and green ones I believe and then you just would get a random duplicate and this one had a duplicate red so we have the original version of these little candy cups which are in amazing shape actually a lot of times the edges of these are um, like kind of folded over and crimped. So this is really in great shape. I'm super happy with this. And again, we know it's the first version because it's got like the thicker hearts. The little candy pieces are very, very thick in the first version. So very cool. And we have the first version of her cake, which is really awesome. Let's see if I can get it out here without breaking the plate. So yeah. Let me look here. Yep, yeah, made in Taiwan. So this is the first version of her cake with the super duper thin plate. Like this plate is so thin, like they can kind of warp over the years, but that's totally normal. This cake is in great shape. None of the, yeah, none of the piping has chipped off of it, but it's so cool to have stuff like this because it's very, very handmade. Like this stuff was made, I, yeah, this was made by Kurt Adler. Um, and so again, without getting into it, Kurt Adler was one of the main third-party manufacturers that made Pleasant Company's accessories, particularly like um, so, like some of the food stuff and like snow globes and things like that. So these were very, very handmade. So you can see here, I believe the wood or the cake itself is wood. And then all of the stuff, like the lettering and stuff that's piped on here is done by hand. So this wasn't molded on here. So if you get an original happy birthday Molly birthday cake, the writing is gonna be a little bit different on everyone because it was hand piped onto here, which makes it so special to me. This is one of the things I love about the early Pleasant Company stuff is that it a lot of it just has like a really handmade feel to it and it just feels so special and like a keepsake. I mean, you can even see here, this particular cake, I don't know if you can see based on how the lens is, but like it's off center, but it's, this is how it would have been shipped. It's just, you know, again, it's got a real handmade quality to it. And you can even see, here we go, like on the side here, like there's just like a little bit of a mistake here where they piped it on and accidentally like smushed it a little bit. But again, that to me is what makes this so special. And in case you were wondering what the bottom of a first edition cake looks like, there you go. So that's it. Well, actually that was almost it for drawer number one. Drawer number one also has, <laughs> has a really nasty looking worm from her uh, her Camp Gowanagan set. So I believe this was from the Capture the Flag set where it came with like the ants and the worms and stuff. And these I think were basically just fishing tackle that were repurposed as doll accessories. So um, I can't remember if there's more uh, uh, of her summer collection in here or not, but we're about to find out. So if nothing else, I have a random worm. So yeah, and oh, also the cake came with candles and I believe all of them are in here, but I'm not gonna take them out because I will definitely lose one of them or more if I take them out. But again, just take my word for it. They're really cool and they are made out of wood as well. So again, they're really fragile, super easy to lose. So anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and put this stuff back in this drawer and we will tear into the next one. This is so fun to do. In a way, it's, I don't know, it sort of feels like you're going going through somebody's childhood collection, even though this one I think was mostly put together by a collector. So uh, I don't think this all belonged to the same child. So I think, um, yeah, it, it's still fun in that way though, right? To like go through an entire, like Molly's first edition collection. Cause it just feels like you're, I don't know. I almost feel like an archeologist doing this stuff. It's so much fun. So. One of the next things that's in here is her china set from her birthday her birthday story basically. So I'll just quickly go through some of the stuff. I mean, I know you don't wanna look at every single piece in depth. I basically wanna find one of the plates so that we can see how early this is. In fact, I actually have the silverware here so maybe we can get a quick idea of how early the this set might be because that's one of the easiest ways to kind of tell a first edition uh, china set for Molly is the shape of the knives and forks. So hopefully this isn't like a super annoying noise in your ears right now. So let's see here. Let's have a look at the silverware. If I can get out, get it out of here. This stuff was packaged so well. 
thankfully. I mean, I'm sure we've all gotten doll stuff in the mail that arrives broken, and you're like, oh great, I can't wait to arm wrestle Mercari for a refund on this one. So, yeah, from what I can tell, all this stuff arrived in great shape. So, this is going to be a first or second edition set. I'm going to venture to say it's probably a first edition. So, we can see here we've got the big, long spoons, um, and then we've got these strange-looking forks, and... The most telltale sign of an original set, uh, like a first edition, is the knives on them almost look like little cheese spreaders that you would get with, you know, if you go to like World Market and get those like, um, like I don't, I don't know what they're called, but you know what I'm talking about. You get like a little cheese spreader and it's got like a funky handle on it. It's basically like one of those. So you've got like a really wide, um, flat knife on here, which was ultimately changed to a skinnier version later on. So this is likely a first edition. If it's a first edition, it's gonna say made in Japan on the bottom of the plates. So real quickly, again, we have a teacup. Again, excellent shape. So far, everything is unbroken, which is awesome. This was all individually wrapped, which is great because um, it isn't always when you buy this stuff. So there's the other teacup. We have, I think this is the for the cream. Because yes, some people do put cream or milk in their tea. I am one of those people in the winter. Like, that's a weird thing about me is I actually like, um, as, even though I'm a southerner, I do like milk in my tea. But I typically only do it in the winter, I guess. And this, I guess, is for sugar. So here we go. The moment of truth is coming up. So here are the, uh, I guess, dessert plates or saucers or whatever. There's two of these. Again, no chips. They're in great shape. And let's have a look at plate number one. And it doesn't have anything on the bottom. And I want to say that this is probably a 1988 set, if I had to guess. Again, I have to check my notes and everything. But from memory, um, I have an original set, again, in the original box with a satin ribbon that's like a confirmed 1987, which is the year that this set was released. I believe mine say Japan on the bottom. And... Sometimes it'll be in red ink and sometimes it'll be in black ink, but this is, I want to say a second edition set, which makes me think this is a 1988 set. So also we have the napkins, again, an early version because the napkins are small. And then we have the tablecloth, which is another thing that's kind of hard to get in good shape. A lot of times this has stains and stuff on it. And this one actually looks pretty good, I have to say. So this one would work great if I decided to keep it would be a good display one, but I think I actually already have a second one for my display. And again, I think, yeah, this is an early one. So this is technically the first version of the tablecloth because it says 100% cotton made in Japan on it. But um, I don't know how many years they had this um, tablecloth like this. So that not really a great indicator of what um, year it's from, but again, it's an early one because of that tag. So um, yeah, that is, Drawer number two. So I'm gonna try and quickly put some of this stuff back in here without breaking any of the china. Cause again, this is gonna be part of how I make some of my money back with this set as like selling a lot of the stuff that I already have in my collection or in some cases I have like duplicates and triplicates of. So I definitely need to start whittling things down. I really don't wanna have more than like two of anything you know like I said I love having one for my archive that's like perfect and pristine and then I like having one that I can have out and um you know rearrange and just not be so precious about because again you know this stuff was meant to be enjoyed but it's just so hard to enjoy something when it is pristine and like basically you know an artifact of history so um we will start in this next door I think this is just padding so um, we have, I think ballerinas coming up and I think we have two different versions. So we had a wood ballerina for Molly, basically from 1986 until I think the mid nineties. And every version of the wood ballerina is really hard to find, even like the later ones. And this is one of the later ones that I believe they started doing in 1988. And so we have the ones that, I don't know what kind of style you would call this, but this is definitely one, I would say this probably more from like 1992 or so, just based on the fact that she, excuse me, has a Pleasant Company gold sticker on her leg. 
These would have like a generic Taiwan sticker on them if they were like a 1988 version. So this would be early 90s. Uh, still really sought after. Somebody's going to want uh, want this for their collection. But I have every single version of the ballerina. Except for weirdly the lit, like the last version. The plastic one. I just in you know in all of my collecting. Sometimes I just sell things to get some quick cash. To buy other things. And Molly's like latest ballerina is super easy to find. And not like a high value item for my collection. So I just went ahead and sold it. Because they were selling for like 20 bucks each at one point. So I sold the one that I had. And at some point I'll get another one but I'm not really that like worried about replacing it. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash idreamofjohnny. I post multiple videos there every single month and it's all content you can't find anywhere else on the internet. We're talking hours and hours worth of content. I show off my obscure American Girl finds, I talk about drama in the doll community, and I open all the mail that you don't see on the YouTube channel. We have a really great community over there and I'd love for you to join us. It's the best thing you can do to help support my channel so I can keep making these videos. And best of all, it costs almost nothing. So what are you waiting for? Also, while I'm at it, be sure to check out my shop at idreamofjohnny.com where you can get tons of awesome merch and the occasional vintage item. All right, that's my sales pitch. Back to me. All right, so I've always talked about like how I tend to be like the old lady that swallowed the fly when I buy stuff because I've been known to buy like $2,000 worth of Pleasant Company items just to get like one piece from the entire lot. And so basically I'll buy like, you know, 50 things all at once from a buyer or from a seller because um, they're selling it in a lot just because like there would be like one snow globe in there that I don't have. And so there were two main things in this collection that I really, really wanted and is the reason I got all this stuff in the first place. And this is reason number one. Now, she is broken, which I was aware of when I bought this. So this is not like a big drama or anything. This will be easily fixable. But I got the very, very first version of Molly's Ballerina. And this is the one pictured in the catalog. And I am so, so excited to finally have a second one of these because my first one is actually still sealed and stapled in the original product bag with a product code on it. So I haven't actually been able to take it out and enjoy it because I don't obviously want to break the original seal from 1986. So I am really, really happy to finally have one that I can sort of put more prominently on display. And one really fun fact about all of this stuff is a lot of the early Pleasant Company accessories were just Christmas ornaments. And this uh, ballerina is one of one instance of that. So you can see here, she has a, you can see where there was like an ornament loop coming out of the top of her head and so i believe that like you know at pleasant company they just ordered a box of these and then they just went through them and just cut the ornament loops off of them and then stuck them in the box with molly's stocking stuff so i still like i have her arm that fell off uh again the pre like not even the previous owner the owner before the person like the person i bought this from uh the arm fell off and again that i don't even think it was, like it's such a clean break i think this is likely just a manufacturing defect where it wasn't glued on well enough so i believe the two owners ago this was glued on but it came off but again i will repair this and it won't be an issue at all so again really really happy to have one of these for my display and i'm actually going to put it up with the rest of my stuff so it doesn't get damaged because these are really fragile but oh, i'm so happy to have this i'll show you one more time just because i'm so ecstatic to finally have an open version of this that i can enjoy Oh, so cool. Again, this is one of the single hardest items to find in all of Pleasant Company history. Like we're talking everything. I would venture to say everything from 1986 to present day. This is probably one of the top five, if not top 10, most difficult items to find. So I have two of them now. So haha. All right. So she's going up here on the shelf. While I'm up here, I was teasing you, but I think I will go ahead and just show you uh, the item that I wanted most from this entire set because this has been on my holy grail list for three years now. And it's funny because this isn't even the version that's shown in the catalog, but it's my favorite version of this. And it is the Toy Soldier original wood snow globe from Molly's Christmas collection. So these, I believe there were three different versions if I recall correctly. There's a Toy Soldier, a Santa Claus, and a snowman. And I think the snowman is what's pictured in the catalog. and I think that might be the version I actually have, but I just really love this toy soldier. He's so cute with his like round 
Red Nose. I just, again, this is just my favorite. I've only seen I've, two or three other people that have had this version. And I've just wanted one of my own for so long, like literally for three years. So when I saw this come up, I was like, all right, I have to get, I have to have this, right? So um, that's why you will be seeing like so many things going for sale because again, I had most of the stuff in this entire thing. I just real like, this is the only thing that we're gonna look at today that I actually didn't have a version of. So again, I am so, so excited. I just think this is so cool. Now the water is a little swampy, but that is normal. I don't think I've ever seen one of these that doesn't have like a little bit of like murkiness in the water, but he still has a lot of the water in here, which is really great. And, you know, I'm always faced with the choice. Do I take this apart and like clean it up and fill, like redo the water and make it look new again? Or do I keep the original like water and bacteria from 1986? And it's always a conundrum, right? Because I want it to look new, but at the same time, I want things to be original. So for the time being, we're going to keep the original swamp water and, you know, we'll m make a decision later. But, you know, I guess Molly has her own little terrarium at the end of the day. But yeah, this is, again, going to go back up in the display here. I am so, so happy I finally had this. I was actually looking at an old video the other day to try and remember which version of the snow globe I actually had because it's packed away. And it's so funny. It was literally over a year ago. It might have been a year and a half ago. I filmed the video even saying like... um this I have the snowman version, but this toy soldier is the one I really, really want. So anybody that has one, please reach out. And it's been still all of this time, and I'm just now finally getting one. So you can definitely see, like why collecting early and like first edition Pleasant Company stuff is so fun because I mean, it is frustrating at times, but it is also really, really rewarding when you finally, after years of searching, get your hands on something that you've thought about like every day or maybe every other day for three years and you finally get it. It's just, I don't know, there's just something so gratifying about that. So again, this is a really big day for my collecting adventure because I finally got one of my holy grails that I need to put down before I drop because I will be so mad if I drop this and it breaks. So let's go ahead and put him up on my original display for safekeeping. And that's everything in Molly's trunk. There was one well, if you really care, here's a random pair of underwear or like her bloomers. Again, these will probably go for sale. I don't know. Most of my dolls are like free balling, so I don't worry about putting underwear on them. So I probably will just sell that because I have like a jillion pairs of those anyway. So um, one last thing I think that's in this trunk is her Christmas box. Now, I think there is a nurse somewhere in here. She might be in the second trunk. So this box is empty, but I think... Um, yeah, I don't, let's see, this would likely be the box that that snow globe came in. And so again, there's probably a nurse in there. There's a chance that that's a 1987 snow globe. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll know based on looking at the nurses and this, I'll, I actually might uh, contact the seller and um, just double check to see, because sometimes people piece things together, um, especially older things, because it's so hard to find originals that sometimes you just find a random snow globe and then you find the box later. So I'll text the seller um, just to be sure, but this does seem like it's the size of a 1987 box. So that might actually be a 1987 snow globe, which is all good because my snowman one is from 1986. So anyway, yeah, let's kind of put some of this away and I don't think you can see it in frame, but I also ended up getting a first edition Samantha trunk as well. So that's what the rest of Molly's collection is in as we speak. I just need to clear a little bit of space and put this, where are we gonna put this? I, y'all, my, oh my gosh, this space is like so terrible. I have dull stuff everywhere and my display isn't like it was, like it, it still hasn't been the same since I got to North Carolina from Oregon. I haven't been able to set it up exactly like it was before, which kind of bugs me a little bit. And you'll even see like, I have like a brand new, well, a brand new vintage My Pony, My Little Pony collection on my top shelf up there just cause I, I don't know, I was feeling my oats one day um, and decided to just put my little ponies up there. So all of this stuff is like getting changed around a bunch. So that's why it's like, I don't know, it hasn't looked as like pristine and organized as it used to. I'm starting to feel like a little bit embarrassed about it, but that's kind of the joy of having a doll collection, right? Is like getting new things, moving things around, trying out different ways of displaying things. Like 
to me that's where a lot of the like peace and joy is in it so yeah i don't know i guess it's all part of the journey so let me set this aside again some of these older trunks again this is something i'll probably change a lot of like these older trunks like parts will just fall off of them again because they're just they weren't made as well as some of the later stuff so I'm guessing parents were like complaining and having things replaced. So that's why they like, that's how they knew what to like kind of change and upgrade over the years. So anyway, oh yeah, here's one like final thing that got a little bit lost in the shuffle while we were going through that first trunk. And that's the original teapot. <laughs> it's like the main piece and I like totally blew past it, but here's the original teapot and it has the lid for it as well. So I, to my knowledge, I think that's a complete set as well. So I, I don't think we are missing anything so far, which is really cool. We'll see what else is in this trunk. But for now, I'm really, really happy with everything. And I'm so excited, like I said, to add a few of these things to my collection. All right, so I'm gonna try and slide this Samantha trunk over here. This trunk is like not in the best of shape, but again, I knew that when buying it. Because like I said, I was trying to look for like a cheap one. Just a quick interruption to clarify. I was fully aware of any damage or missing parts on all of the stuff in today's haul. I know sometimes sellers can leave these details out, so I just wanted to be sure it was super clear that this was an A plus transaction with a seller and I wouldn't hesitate to buy from them again. When you collect stuff like this that's almost 40 years old, it's usually taken a beating from its first owner that had no idea that this would be valuable someday. So that's why they leave these things in basements for decades and that's why damage like this usually happens. So yeah, first editions in general tend to have damage and missing parts. And again, I bought this from a collector, so this was the condition that they originally received it in and every detail was disclosed to me before purchasing it. Okay, back to me. But yeah, I really wanted just kind of a um, a trunk that, well, not that I wanted a bad condition trunk, but I just wanted one that was super cheap and one I didn't have to worry about fading. And this really fit the bill because this has some staining and watermarks on it. And it, truthfully, I think it might actually have some mold stains on the bottom, which we won't look at today because it's kind of icky, but um, I'm ultimately gonna take this apart sanitize it, kill everything that I can kill, and clean it as best as I can, and then have it be part of my display. Because again, this is really just more for fun because I have a mint complete one from 1986, which is right there, and every minute that it's getting sunlight on it, I'm having a panic attack. So I can finally take all of that down and put this up in its place, so that's so exciting. So anyway, let me slide Molly's trunk out of frame here, and we can have dive into Samantha's. Now, I feel like you've seen Samantha's trunk a million times on my channel because I'm so proud of my Samantha display because I have one of the best Samantha collections in the entire world. I pretty much have everything. So, well, everything first edition, like from the 80s and early 90s. I have all this stuff that really matters, right? So um, I just have like a banging Samantha collection. So um, we don't need to go through her trunk, like, um, like the details of all of it, but you can see here, First edition, some very subtle differences, mainly the lining on the inside. So um, let's go ahead and open this up. Again, I've seen trunks in better shape, but honestly, you know, this is a lot better condition than I was expecting. And I think this is going to look really, really good on my temporary display. And it, I, honestly, it might end up being my permanent display trunk. Just again, I'm so worried about that red lining fading over the years. So we have to be really careful. Okay. so. This is so typical with these trunks, and this happened to me when I shipped everything. The drawers kind of like love to fly out of them, so I think one of the drawers came out here, which is, again, it's just typical, right? Because uh, I guess this was on Patreon, so maybe not all of you have seen this. Um, I've been doing a series, like, uh, or I did a series of unpacking my entire doll collection uh, after moving. So, like, we're talking, like, I don't know, I wanna say 25 to 30 boxes of dolls, doll accessories, uh, just anything you can imagine American Girl. I've gone through and have started to unbox it. Uh, well, like on the Patreon channel, just sort of in a, this kind of style video where it's not really structured or planned. It's just like, okay, let's grab a box and start putting stuff on shelves. So I have uh, filmed all of that obviously, and I think I have one or two more parts to upload still, but that's, Again, all on the Patreon, because again, it's just so casual. I don't like flooding YouTube with so much content where it's just like, oh my God, shut up already. So yeah, today's a special little treat, I guess. But, um, or is it? I don't know. You're probably asleep right now. So anyway, when I was unboxing my Samantha truck, I had 
a heart attack because this same thing happened with mine. I thought I had packed it so well uh, that nothing would budge or anything on the moving truck because I had to go on a moving truck. Um, and spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the other videos, I took my most valuable Pleasant Company stuff in the car with us, like for, I think it was like six days on the road. Like every single night we'd put it in the back seat and then, uh, or every morning put it in the back seat and every night when we stopped at the hotel, I would take it out, take it to the hotel room where it was like climate controlled and everything. Like I was a total psychopath. Um, but you know, I, it was worth it. Everything arrived safely. But yeah, when I was opening my trunk after having been on the moving trunk, truck, um, all the drawers had fallen out and I like almost lost it because I was like, this is, I will never find a pristine Samantha trunk from 1986 ever again. So I was like, luckily everything was fine, but I just had a heart attack when I saw it because I thought, oh no, I have destroyed the only pristine Samantha trunk from 1986 in existence. So all is good. And, but like I said, I guess that all the, my point is like, I am not surprised that these drawers slid out a little bit. It's actually not too bad. The bottom one's in there and this is actually missing a drawer, which again, I knew about, so no big deal. And again, this is just for display. So like whatever's in here is fine by me. So uh, I'm just taking some of the padding out like this tissue paper and I'm throwing it on the ground cause I'm a lazy slob. There is so much stuff in here. I thought we were getting to the end of this video and I was like, oh, never mind. There's like a thousand outfits and accessories in here. So this trunk is, I swear, I think this trunk is actually fuller than the last one. So I hope you're hydrated. So let me get this tissue paper out of here. I don't think there's anything wrapped up in here, but a one tip, if you are a wrapping doll stuff, uh, be sure to like unfold and unshrivel every piece of tissue paper because Every once in a while, something might be in there, whether it's like a birthday candle or a paper clip or I don't know, like a tiny little hand sticker. There's always something that manages to be in the tissue paper and you don't want to throw it out because oftentimes that's the stuff that is like super rare and adds so much value to these pieces. So yeah, always check every single piece of packaging before throwing it away. So there's so much stuff in here. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to go through this. And again, more things than I even realized. So this is gonna be fun. So let me get this trunk open. And one of the good things about Samantha's, at least her earliest trunks, is they open like 180 degrees. So you can access them a lot easier. Ooh, we have another Christmas box in here. So um, a lot of stuff that I forgot about. What do we wanna start with first? We wanna do maybe outfits. I got a few things that are kind of rolling around in here. This is so exciting. Um, Let's start with outfits, right? I feel like that'll be a good interlude between accessories. So I believe most of this stuff is first edition because again, I got this from a collector that had spent, basically done exactly what I had done and just scoured eBay and learned everything they could about finding the earliest edition stuff. So this looks to be a 1986 first edition version of Molly's school outfit, which we will confirm really quickly. Yes, it is. So this has the original made in West Germany, 1986 copyright tag on it. If you can see that right there, really, really exciting. These are so rare because Molly was the least popular of all of the Pleasant Company dolls in the, like in 1986. So her stuff is the rarest because they didn't sell as much of it. Whereas like Samantha is a little bit easier to find even though like the first edition stuff is still really hard to find. Molly really is the most difficult. So finding like first edition versions of their outfits that were actually made in the goods factory in West Germany is really hard because to my knowledge, they only made the outfits in West Germany for the first run. And then for the second run, um, when they restocked, they did everything in China. So to find clothes that um, like from their, you know, school, uh, school, Christmas, uh, birthday, the birthdays were never made in, um, in uh in west germany so it's typically like the the their pjs their school and christmas outfits if you can find those with west german tags those are the rarest versions because they just made so few of them it was a true first edition so um that's really great that's a complete actually i don't know if the ribbons are in here i can't remember i believe molly's original thing came with ribbons so her hair ribbons might be missing for that but here is a first edition birthday outfit. Again, this would be from 1987. And I can tell you without seeing the tag because there, um, the pockets on the first edition version are missing 
uh, the third green rickrack piece on here. So if you see a navy blue and red only on the pockets, that's how you know it's a true first edition. So this will have a 1986 copyright tag, but it is actually from 1987. They just were using up old tags, but I'll show you anyway. If you can see here, <laughs> I'm like the worst presenter in the world. But yeah, and another really cool thing is they use like these sort of dark beige, uh, el uh, not elastics, um, what is this called? Velcro, and it's usually in two or three pieces. This one's in three pieces. So again, this is in really, really good shape. Somebody's really gonna love having this. I think I already have two of these, so I need to get rid of this one. Um, what else do we have here? This looks like a very early version of her PJs, but it's not the first edition because I have two of the first edition and I think it's probably the single most difficult outfit for Molly to find. Well, actually no, the single most difficult pleasant company outfit to find ever out of everything from 90, 1986 to 1988 is Molly's first edition pajamas. And the reason I also know that is because this person has literally everything first edition except for her, I think her nurse and her pajamas. So um, these are probably gonna have a 1986 copyright on them, but the buttons on here look really early. So I think this is probably um, a 1987 version we're about to find out. It should have a 1986 copyright on it still, but we'll find out. So. Let's take these out. And yeah, let's see. Yep, 1986. So I think this is actually a third edition version, honestly, because I think there is a version that's exactly like these that has a paper tag from West Germany. And then the very, very first versions will be fuzzy. So Molly's pajamas originally were made out of flannel and they are impossible to find. And they will probably be the last thing that I ever sell out of my collection because, like I said, the flannel version of her uh, PJs, I think, is probably the single hardest outfit to find in all of Pleasant Company history. Again, I have two of them, and I almost stupidly sold one of them. That would have been a big regret because I love having a pair of them. So if I want to dress, like, two of my Mollies up like twins, I can do that at Christmas time. So yeah, again, it's very evidence that like that's one of the most difficult things to find because this is such, this collection would have been so incredibly time consuming and difficult to put together and they still weren't able to get those um, PJs. So yeah, that just makes me extra proud to have those PJs. But again, this is still a really rare set. I will probably sell these because um, I don't need them. I have too many pairs of PJs for Molly. And then here we have the last of her original Pleasant Company collection, which is her... Made in West Germany, Christmas, ever evergreen velvet dress. I don't remember what this is called, but again, I don't even have to look at the tag because I know by that lace pattern that that's gonna be a first edition. So this will be have been made in West Germany and it has the original paper tag. Again, these were made by Goods in 1986. So a really, really rare piece of Pleasant Company history. This one is in really good shape actually. Sometimes these get a little bit gnarly because they were made with cheaper velvet than the later ones, but this one's actually in really good shape and the lace looks really great. So that's another great piece from this collection. All right, I think I see some more stuff in a drawer down here. This, I mean, truly is a complete early Pleasant Company Molly collection, which is so exciting. So we've got a meat outfit in here. Let's see. Well, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Never mind. I was like, we'll get to that in a second. So we have a Dickie from her meat outfit. Again, I can tell it's a very early version because it's made with very thin fabric. We have a first edition beret, which is really awesome. I might actually keep this because I think I only have one of these. And you know what? I think there are two in here, which is so cool. Um, so this looks like they tied. I will ask the seller about this. They might not know, but... This looks like they tied an additional like ribbon kind of thing on the top of this beret. I don't think that's original, but this is an original made by Goods. I guess, no, I think they had these made in China actually for the meat accessories. So this is a first run Goods version with a made in West Germany paper tag. Very awesome. And this one here looks like it might actually be another first edition, which it is not. It's actually a second edition. It has the made in China tag on it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. You probably don't care at this point, but it does have a really early version of that loop on the top, which is 
still, can you even see that? It's a, it makes this extremely rare. So I probably will keep this too. Again, it's the elastics on these are usually stretched out and this one is a little bit, but it'll actually probably go on our head a little bit easier. So I probably will keep both of those berets because they're so hard to find. So anyway, we've got, I think a little bit more of her meat outfit here. Again, probably not as exciting. So this is another paper tag. West German one. And again, they, the, for the meat outfits, they were paper tagged up until 1991. So basically almost every white body Molly you find is going to have a meat skirt made in West Germany with this paper tag. Uh, only the last, what was I saying? Oh, uh, Molly's skirt um, is going to have a paper tag if she's a white body, unless it's like one of the last white bodies ever made, they're going to have that satin tag on it. And again, this is another meat skirt with a paper tag on it. So very cool. And then we have presumably, presumably what is a meat sweater off of a white body Molly, likely a 1986 or 1987 Molly. Again, I may or may not keep this. I have so many of those sweaters, but it might be good to have a meat outfit for every Molly doll that I have. So here we have a purse and I guess we're about to find out which version it is. Oh, we've got some stuff in here. So we've got her original handkerchief. Let's unfold this. Usually there's the steel penny in here, which there is. So this is the original steel penny, which is an actual steel penny from the wartime era. And it's in nice shape. Again, I have a bunch of those, probably will sell it. This does not have a tag on it. So I want to say this is probably a 1987 version. This probably came with that second beret. So that makes me want to say, ooh, we have an original pair. Well, I'll get to it in a second. <laughs> I got excited because I saw something I forgot was in here. Um, and then we have a copyright 1986, very, very thin early version of her purse. Again, this would have likely been sold in 1987. So I have a good, um, I have it on a good hunch that all of these meat accessories um, came with that second version of the um, the beret with the, the satin tag and not the paper tag. So this would have been a 1987 set. But one of the most exciting things is we have an original pair of lensless glasses for Molly. And I've shown these on the channel before. But these are really sought after. I've seen these sell for as much as $100 just for the glasses themselves. This one actually has the original uh, glasses case with them too, which is really, really great. And it's in great shape. A lot of times these get pilled and kind of damaged over the time or over time. So I will probably keep this at least because it's in such good shape. But um, yeah, these are the original version of her glasses that don't have lenses. And the a lot, they, these usually will come with an elastic, but a lot of times it's stretched and disintegrated over the years. So this one would have um, lost the original elastic, but there's two little loops in the back here where basically uh, they strung elastic through and they basically strapped to Molly's head around like the back of her head. So um, it can look a little bit funny to people that aren't super familiar with early Molly stuff. But if you look in those original catalogs, this is what her glasses looks like. So um, again, really exciting. I've never seen these, like I've gotten these for like $35 before and that's felt like a steal. So this is a really great rare item to have. So I don't know, I might clean these up and put them on one of my dolls. Although I have like a, like a bazillion pairs of these. So anyway, let's see what else is in here. I'm trying to like pre-look at this stuff and go in some sort of order, but I think it's like gone off the rails. So, oh, here's another random thing. This came with her party treat set. Uh, this is her original, I don't, were these, are they begonias? I forget what kind of flower this is supposed to be. Geranium maybe? I think they're supposed to be geraniums. So this came with that original party treat set and it's got the original version which has white flowers interspersed in them and it's got the Silvestri sticker on the bottom because Silvestri was the company that made these. So very cool. And I think that completes the party treat set, which is exciting. Another thing from the very first version of her party or her birthday collection, we have the original rabbit fur version of Bennett. 
Now, um, I don't know how, again, I'll have to dig and look and see if there's a way to figure out if there's like a 1987 versus like 88 version. I think it's kind of hard to determine because a lot of people will do it based on the coloring of the fur, but I really don't think that that's a good marker of how old a Bennett is because uh, these were like hand done. So I think it really would just depend on who was spraying them in the factory. Um, so I don't think it's a really good indicator of their age, but this is essentially a first edition of Bennett because he's made out of real disgusting rabbit fur from a rabbit that was slaughtered in probably 1985 or maybe 1986. I don't know. I don't know much about dead rabbits. Gross. Um, so let's see. We've got a little bit of camp stuff in here. Oh no, wait, there's some more birthday stuff. Let's, let's go through the birthday stuff. So in here, we've got a few, might find some random clothespins, but we have her clothespin game from her party treat set again i believe it's the first edition so we have the like milk bottle and these like miniature safety pins again this will be something that i'll be keeping because this is like probably six months earlier than the version that i have but i'm just a stickler for that stuff i really want the very first one that was ever made so that's just how i collect so we've got a jump rope from that same set again very early it's a little bit frayed on the ends but again totally normal because these were not made to the same quality as the later ones and we also have oh my god we have something i have never in my life laid my eyes on i didn't know this existed so ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between we have a version of her roller skates with plastic hubcaps, I guess we'll call them. Look at this. These are plastic. I had no idea that this existed. So normally the version of the black um, wheeled roller skates is going to have a metal, I'm just gonna call them hubcaps. I know they're not called hubcaps, but we're gonna call them hubcaps. Um, they're usually made out of metal. I wish mine weren't packed away, but I'll, maybe I'll dig up a photo of them. So you can see, but they're usually metal. And then some of the later ones actually were black wheeled and they'd have like a little white rubber, like kind of spoke in the middle of them or axle, I guess you would call it. So I am quite shocked by this. This is something I probably would have paid a decent amount of money for. I have to say, had I seen these go up on eBay? Now I could not tell you if this is a first edition, a second edition, but it's probably first or second edition. I want to say maybe second, just because the um, metal version is what's pictured in the catalog. But I cannot believe there is a plastic version of these roller skates. Now, bummer that they're a little, uh, one of the straps is snapped on here, but I bet you I can glue that back together. Overall, these are in really good shape, but I will be keeping this set because I had no idea that there was a plastic wheeled version. And I want to say, that the wheels on these might even be brown. It's getting kind of dark in here, but these are very cool. I know I'm like going on for like half an hour about a pair of like some hubcaps on a pair of roller skates, but this is so interesting to me. And this is again, why collecting Pleasant Company is so fun and exciting. Cause sometimes you just get a box of something and you're like, what? And today was one of those days because I had no idea that there were plastic <laughs> hubcap roller skates. So I'm so excited. This is so cool. This is another thing I get to like throw in my collection and have an excuse for having way too many things. So anyway, the final piece of the, that part of her collection is this pin the tail on the donkey game, which luckily is not cut up. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Looks like somebody played with it because there's a little bit of a pinhole at the top. But again, I am so thrilled that we have a new discovery in Pleasant Company history. Again, this stuff has been around for like, what, 37 years? I can't do math, but the 35th anniversary was in 2021. So, oh my gosh, this like, we really are pushing 40 years on Pleasant Company and we're still finding things we never even heard of. So it's so, so exciting. So really quickly in here, we've got a pamphlet from 1991, which is interesting. That might give us some insight onto these nurses I'm about to look at. So there were two nurses in this set and they look very early. They both have the curved arms, which is I think the first version of this version of the nurse. Now there is a very first version with the sleep eyes. We've seen her on the channel before. Mine is 
tucked safely away in a box in a closet while things are kind of, uh, you know, in transition right now, we shall say. Um, so I'm trying to keep her as safe as possible because again, that's when we're talking top five most difficult pleasant company items to find, that nurse is one of them. Maybe I should, would y'all want to see a video about the top, like top five or top 10 most difficult items to find in pleasant company history? Like a real one, not one where we're pretending like, I don't know, like the promise dress is like some real rare thing. We're talking like true, hard to find rare versions of things. Maybe, maybe we'll do one of those. I think that might be fun. So anyway, this is the second version of the nurse. Still kind of hard to find. Um, let's look at the, uh, the tag in her dress to see what year these are from. I have a suspicion that I have a 1992, is this 91? I have a suspicion that I have like a partial 1991 uh, nurse and snow globe set, but I don't think I have a snow globe from 1991. Let's see. Usually there's a tag in here that will tell you. So this is a 1992 nurse. So this will be the nurse I think that came with this pamphlet and she's got both of her shoes, which is really great. She randomly has one of Molly's meat ribbons tied in her hair. So I probably will take that out and keep that because those are like actually kind of hard to find like those original taffeta version of her meat ribbons those changed to satin ones later on but the original like 80s and early 90s meat ribbons are taffeta and they actually fray a lot too which is really annoying um let's see what tag we have on this nurse i suspect she might be a little earlier i do not see a tag in here so oh wait no here it is i'm very curious she might still be a 90s scroll. I'm just curious. Um, she is 1986. So this is a 1986 tag, which would make her probably a 1987 nurse. So that kind of pieces that together for me. So this, this would have been the nurse that came with that toy soldier snow globe that I was so excited about. So a 1986 tag on this nurse means she was a 1987. So that's a 1987 set. And I'll have to figure out which box belongs to them. Um... These look kind of, I think, I think it's this one right here, actually. So let's go ahead and take it out of here. I think it's, it's empty. So this would have been the box here that the original 87 one came in because they were a little bit smaller than the later ones. So if you see here, these are the two boxes that came with it. And now there were multiple different versions. I want to say there was one that was even smaller than this, but if you can see here, this one on, in my right hand here, actually, I guess is your left you can see that this box is slightly bigger and it's definitely deeper. I don't know if you can see that, but this box is a little bit bigger and this is the typical like late 80s, early 90s version and this slightly smaller box, which was honestly too small for all of the stuff that was supposed to come in it, um, is the like 86, 87 version. So very cool. I don't think there's anything else in here. There might be a piece of tissue paper in here, but honestly, this looks nice and I don't want to open it up. So let's just say there's nothing in there. Uh, we have randomly, I think the final, uh, is this, this isn't a paper clip, a clothespin to go in her, like, what is this stupid game called? This was before the time of video games. So you know, before iPads and like Mario Kart, people were like dropping clothespins and milk bottles for fun. So whatever this is called, I have a complete version of that now. Hooray for me, so much fun. All right, so we have a capture the flag, American flag from her summer story. And I think we've got a few more summer things in here. So we're about to find out, but yeah, again, this is like what's in every like pencil cup holder on your principal's office desk. I don't know. I just, th I, I don't know. I picture this in a principal's office for some reason. And funny story, I was only ever sent to the principal's office once when I was a kid. I was actually pretty well behaved when I was little. I kind of, I don't know. I'm weird. I was a rebel, but I also like, I don't know. Anyway, I won't get into it, but I was only ever once sent to the principal's office when I was a kid. And it was in first grade and I got sent to the principal's office for gossiping. So yeah, who knew I was gonna grow up to be a homosexual? <laughs> Me. Um, so anyway, um, here's a random, I don't, I need to make sure the seller meant to send me this. This is from Samantha's summer story. Um, it's an I pine for you pillow. Um, I don't know if they're supposed to smell, but I'm worried it's gonna smell like dust and make me sneeze the rest of the video. So I'm going to hold off on that. But yeah, so this is totally random. I wasn't expecting that. We have a few stockings for Molly. And 
Again, it escapes me what version is what. I want to say the smaller ones are the earlier ones. So one of these likely came with the wooden ballerina that I was so excited about. I want to say it was probably the smaller one. And then we have a larger one here, which to me looks more like a 90s one. So very, very cool. Yeah, I randomly got three stockings in here. That's awesome. All right, again, skipping around again, because this stuff is sort of like randomly put in here for, you know, to make sure that it arrived in good condition. So um, things are a little bit randomly packed, obviously, just so that they arrive safely. But we have her, is this called a paddle or an oar? This is from her summer story. I think it's her capture the flag set, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. We have her sit upon, which I believe is from... Again, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one that had her mess kit and stuff in it. And this likely has, yeah, it has like the newspaper and letter from her dad in it, which I won't open. I know this video is getting kind of long, so we're not going to look at every little piece because there's really nothing that special about this version. Like the first version is like the later versions. So this trunk ended up only coming up with or coming with two drawers. One of the drawers is missing, which again, I knew about and it's fine. I'll, I'll just use it as an extra display shelf. So no big deal at all. Um, so yeah, let's go through drawer number one, which, okay. We have more from her summer story. We have a, like a mess kit in here. So, oh, and randomly we've got a compass again, part of the capture the flag set. We've got all of her like cookware and stuff in here. This looks to be complete. Yeah, it's got all three pieces in there. Very cool. Again, skipping around a little bit, we've got some flip books. Again, likely from... One of these would at least be from a later set, but again, it's gonna take a little bit of figuring out, but yeah, probably one of them came with um, that ballerina up there too. So I need to figure out which one is which. We've got some rare paint sets, which is very cool. Actually, we have two of this one, which it took me forever to find these originally, but I got these a couple of years ago. So these will end up getting sold. I'm gonna try and figure out what goes with what um, and do the best you know job that I can. If I have a complete one, or maybe I'll just sell in pieces because I actually think there are two Yoyos in here that I want. So anyway, early, early paint sets. These were sold in 1987 and possibly 1986 again i have to check my facts i got this one like the, this version with my 1986 molly so it is possible that they sold this version in 86 but typically the 86 ones you'll see without any sort of decorative sticker on them and again this would be from that 90s set we have a pair of barrettes from the stocking set which, you know, these end up being really hard to find. I've seen single barrettes from these things selling for like $20 for just a single barrette. They are really actually kind of hard to find. We've got a bunch of bugs in here. Again, I don't know if it's complete. I'll have to go through it and check, but we have the like, or I can't remember if it was fishing bait or what in the story, but we have all of the like, can you see that? Like another one of those like little jiggly gross worms. We have a cricket, which absolutely will fool you if you drop this on the ground and don't realize and then you're like arranging your doll collection and look down and squeal because you see a cricket you will not be the first person on this planet that has done that so we're not going to say who did it <laughs> um so we have another ant or no, i guess this is our first ant that we found we have another Ugh! these are so gross i, I used to just have that visceral rea visceral reaction when seeing these, I didn't realize I accidentally picked up a cricket and I was like, Ugh! Um, so another worm. The cricket that just scared me. Here, I'll put it against the trunk so you can see it. Another ant. And again, I have to be really careful because this is like how you lose stuff because, you know, they just end up in random places and I might accidentally throw away an ant if I'm not careful. I don't know, why am I showing you every single ant in this thing? Like, my God, are you asleep yet? So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> like, spend 10 minutes looking at fake bugs while I scream at every single one that I pick up. Uh, randomly, we have eardrops from Molly's later version of her winter pastime set, which 
actually is a pretty rare set. It's kind of hard to find, especially for like less than $250. I think this is the only piece from that set that's in here, but I'll probably just keep it um, and maybe try and piece one together. But yeah, that's her winter pastimes from like, I want to say they did that in like the late 90s. So um, anyway, oh wow. So I've got two of these. I wasn't sure if this was the red version or not, but this is actually a version of the yo-yo that I do not have. Um, so I have only one more yo-yo to find now. I've got like six or seven versions of them. They were all different random colors and some of the rarer ones can be really hard to find. And I didn't have uh, this color yet and now I have two. So this is like sort of the light blue and orange version, a super rare version. Again, this is from, I'm gonna venture to say again, like these are from like 1987. Um, Again, I'm gonna have to do some more piecing together of all this stuff and really make sure I am sure what year this stuff is from. But I would venture to say that one of these came with, again, that rare uh, ballerina that we unboxed like forever ago. So one interesting thing is this one, I don't know if this was replaced by the owner or not, but the string on this is so thin on this one. I'll have to do some investigating again to see, but this is definitely the original string on this one. So. Not entirely sure, but I'm really excited. I probably should sell one of these, but again, in all of my years of collecting, it's taken me forever to get this version of the yo-yo. So yeah, um, I think I might be keeping a few more things than I even planned when like getting all of this stuff. So I'm really, oh look, another, there were so many worms, jeez, like an infestation. Um, yeah, and A in hygiene, I don't think so. So yeah, I probably will be keeping uh, a good handful of this stuff just again, because there's some really rare things in this set that I'm so excited about. And then the rest we will find new homes for because there are so many collectors looking for these things. Oh boy, and talk about something I have a lot of. So over the years, I've gotten so many uh, Christmas sets for Molly, just trying to chase down like rare paint sets and ballerinas and rare versions of yo-yos and flip books. It's just a smorgish, is it smorgish Borg or smorgish board? I don't know. Um, but I, in doing all of that, I have ha gotten so many versions of her candy cane as well. And I just ended up keeping them because I was, uh, well, one year I did this and I haven't done it since, but I did a Christmas tree, like a doll Christmas tree. And I did, I basically decorated it all with Molly's candy canes because I had like uh, more than a dozen of them. And again, I think this collector has kind of done the same thing that I have. So I know roughly like when these things are from, but like this would have been like a 90s version. Again, this probably came with the tall uh the tall stocking that we looked at earlier so again probably 1991 1992 roughly probably 1992 and these are the earlier version because they have the taffeta uh like the green taffeta ribbon so these were originally christmas ornaments so like if you look at the top of this one here it's like nothing special on top but you can see holes on tops of these here again as i was telling you before the, a lot of the original items, like accessories in Pleasant Company's collections were just repurposed Christmas ornaments. And this is another example of that. So these were just candy cane Christmas ornaments that they just yoinked the like little gold ribbon out of the top. Or it was like cord basically, like a little shiny gold loop that you would hang this on a tree with. They usually just like, yeah, they would just yank them out and put them in Molly's stocking set. Every once in a while you can find one, um, usually from like 86 or 87, where they were probably just in such a hurry. They were like, don't worry about taking <laughs> the loops out. So some uh, sets you will find will actually have the gold loop still in them. And there are a couple other things, I think like her ballerina and stuff. Um, on the odd occasion, you can get one with a loop in it and assuming it's not like a, like a, uh, not a bootleg, but just one that wasn't purchased through Pleasant Company. But anyway, so yeah, these are super early candy canes. I need to check if I have ones like this, like exactly like this, I probably do. But anyway, very exciting. These are super early. All right, we've got one more drawer to get through. And um, yeah, I don't even know what's in here. Oh, no, we don't, that was it. <laughs> so this drawer was empty, um, but I guess as a bonus, I'll give you a close up look at the original pattern from Samantha's trunk, which is quite different. And in my opinion, a lot prettier than what they changed it to. I have 
no idea why they changed it. I think the interior of this looks so much better than what they ultimately went with. So, um, I don't know. I just, I love the first edition stuff. It's rare. It's fun to hunt for. And in some cases it looks better than the later ones. Now, again, that's not always the case. Sometimes they made some like vast improvements to things, but I don't know. I just think it's so special to hunt out the things that were sold before like the world really, I don't know. I mean, I know they did that they did like a million dollars in sales in their for like basically the first quarter of opening the company. But I don't know, just when this stuff was made, it was like like they were packaging all this stuff up and they had no idea if this like doll line was going to be successful. And so I just feel like it's so special and there's so much like good energy and all of this stuff. So I just really love collecting it and putting these collections together and sharing them with you. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was so much fun for me to do. And again, I know this was kind of long winded, but I felt it would be fun to kind of hop on here and do a casual unboxing because I feel like I haven't done one in forever on YouTube. So if you like this video, be sure to check me out on Patreon because there are a ton more videos like this and it's a really great way to support my channel so I can keep making videos for the internet because um, I love to do it and I also love to eat and keep a roof over my head. So please consider joining the Patreon. I would love to have you there. If you like today's video, be sure to hit the like button because that also helps this video reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, uh, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button because again that really helps me out as well. Also don't forget to check out my merch at idreamofjohnny.com. I'm basically building my dream shop so I'd love for you to check it out and maybe pick up a thing or two to help support the channel. And if you want to keep hanging out I've got a ton more videos like this one right here so I would love to see you there. Bye for now!